Dan Ullman, Matt Burney, your grade one stakes action at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the Santa Margarita for Phillies and Mares going a mile and an eighth, and it's carded as race number nine. Let's throw up the field for the Santa Margarita. There are two big names in here. The number two, Vail Dory for Bob Baffert. All she's done is win her last four races, five out of her last six. And then you've got Finest City, last year's Philly and Mare Sprint champion, winner of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, and she rolled last time out in the Santa Monica. She certainly did. The real interesting thing at this point is going to be to find out how far Finest City actually wants to go. Nine furlongs on dirt. This is going to be the first time they try to do this with her. Talent-wise, I kind of think she has more ability than Vail Dory, but ultimately distance can be the water. I, I agree with you. I think that Finest City is a slightly better horse than Vail Dory. Like you, and we've talked about these two fillies and mares for a long, long time on DRF Live on these stakes previews. We think that ultimately they may rematch down the road at a shorter distance. Yeah, and the Philly and Mare sprint down the road because Vail Dory can't step with the best of the best as far as the route sort of females are concerned. We'll find out about Finest City. I mean, I don't think she's going to ultimately want to go this far, but if they do rematch at Del Mar going seven-eighths of a mile, it could be interesting. Now, Vail Dory has basically gotten the same soft trip set up in her last three races as a heavy favorite. It's going to be more difficult this time around. you got to think Rafael Bayaron is going to be fairly aggressive, sending out of the gate, establish inside position. She threw a fit before yeah. the gate last time out. Does that bother you in a race like this, or is it just a different situation? No, certainly. You never want to see a horse that's been professional throughout all of a sudden start acting like a fool. The other problem is, even if Bejarano sends her out of here, there's other speed in this race. Right. Now we go out to a mile and an eighth, and let's call it for what it is. I understand she's had open margins of victory. She hasn't dominated these fields. She's been better than what she's faced. The problem for her is now she's facing a much better field. Finest City took care of a wet track last time out in the Santa Monica. She went right to the front. It was a very visually impressive performance. She did not beat much in no. that race. I think she has a little bit of an advantage that she's outside Vail Dory. I think Tyler Bays is going to play off of that one. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see ultimately because the other thing is the other speed is drawn on the outside of Finest City. So I suppose there's a couple of things at play here. One, do you have any concerns about the mile on an eighth? Two, do you just look at it and say it's a match race between Finest City and Vail Dory? Because if that's the case, Tyler is in a better position. I'm not convinced it's just those two. The six is perfect pick. She's won her last two races for Jim Cassidy. A score two starts back over a muddy track last time out on turf. She does seem to have a little bit of ability. She's great at stakes placed. She's very lightly raced. You can argue she has some upside potential. It's likely going to be the strongest pace situation that she's faced in a long time, if ever. Yeah, you look at that most recent start on turf, she walked on the front end when she went gate to wire. Two back, she walked out there on the front end, 47-1. and one. She's not going to be able to go that slow. I don't know that she can sit off of the pace. I also don't know that she's this good. Wild at Heart won the grade three Buena Vista race that was taken off of the turf most recently on February the 18th. Uh, she was hoping it came off the turf. It did come off the turf, but Vail Dory seemed to have her number two and three back. Yeah, I just I can't envision a scenario where the tables get turned here. Lady Tappet's an interesting five-year-old mare. She's had her share of physical problems. She once went to the sidelines for over a year. Now it's her third start of the form cycle. She caught wet tracks in her first two starts off the layoff. Maybe with firm going. Going in an early battle between Finest City and Vail Dory, she can at least get a strong piece of this. Yeah, maybe she gets a piece. She's one for seven, though. I have a hard time making a case for her on the win end. Anstrachada, the number eight. Distance isn't going to be a problem for her. The Connections thought so much of her. They ran her against the boys in the grade two marathon Breeders' Cup weekend going 14 furlongs, and that was just a bad idea. Yeah, but probably pushing it a little bit for her first time in North America. The most recent start in the Astros. Good effort against a good mare. Thought it was really good. And look, good year for Roses has turned into sort of a revelation in Southern California. She looked like she was in trouble in the far turn. She got shuffled a little bit, came on again at the end. It's nice to see that she's proven on dirt as well. The question becomes, is this too short for her? Because, I mean, boy, you look at her body of work, she wants to go long, long. Yeah, is this too short for her, and will she just be run off her feet yeah. early? She doesn't appear to have a lot of early speed. And on this track, as you know, for following it sure. very closely, you don't want to come from too far out of it. Autumn Flowers, a horse, she's tried Vail Dory in her last three races. She's a really nice mare, but it's hard to see her turning the tables or improving six to ten lengths in a month. Yeah, I mean, look, I've liked her in each of these past three, trying to make cases for her to hit the exact... Uh, and she can't quite get there. She runs third. She's a nice mare. I don't think she's this good. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade one Santa Margarita at Santa Anita. Mike's go, uh, Matt's going for a price. I'm expecting the four show stealer. <laughs> Second in her last two races, the La Cañada, the Santa Maria. Make the argument. The difference maker for me here, because I, look, I didn't like her in either one of those. You liked her in both of them, I believe. Yeah. And she ran her eyeballs out. She ran her eyeballs out. The problem was she didn't get a setup that she needed. She needed a little bit more ground, I think, and she also needed some pace in front of her, someone to keep Vail Dory honest. 
She didn't get that in either opportunity. Now she goes nine furlongs and she gets more pace in front of her. If I have questions about Finest City going nine, I have questions about Vale Dory's overall quality, I have questions about everyone else, and I know there is more pace, things can set up for her. She tried so hard in the Santa Maria. I, I think she's got a big chance in here. You're taking a shot and you're getting a price. She's ran well in both of those races. She tried. She had to sustain, you know, long moves, yeah. quarter of a mile moves, and that's not her. You give her some pace and you let her roll at the right time, she's probably going to come with a strong run for trainer Art Sherman. You're getting Kent DeZormo this time around. I'll go with Finest City. Of the big two, I think she's the better horse. I think maybe she'll be slightly better at the distance. I know it's a different game, but she was close, at least, at nine furlongs on the turf yep. in that maybe last year, and I like that she's outside of Vale Dory, so she might be the one pushing Vale Dory, yeah. not the one facing that outside pressure. I'll go with Finest City, 3-2 for me in the grade one Santa Margarita. Matt's going 4-3, 2-8, a shot with Show Steeler. If you're playing the Santa Anita Saturday card from home, $300 sign-up bonus, DRF bets, you know where to go, drf.com slash trifecta. Approximate post time for the Santa Margarita, 4-30 Pacific on Saturday at the Great Race Place. Good luck.